Welcome to Game Devs Play Games, where we play games while talking game design. Today, we're doing something we haven't done in a while. Just playing a board game. Too long, really. It's, it has been way too long. We're playing some Onitama. Onitama! This game is made by Arcane Wonders? Uh, sp sp it's a part of the Dice Towers Essentials. Mm, okay. So yeah, Arcane Wonders, Dice Tower Essentials line. It's like kind of like a little you know, marriage they got going on in that regard. Um, game is fantastic. I've had my eye on it for a while. And uh, picked up a copy at Gen Con. And we're going to play this. And, and the rules are really simple. I think that's one of the, the greatest strengths of this game. Is, Absolutely. Um, it, you pick it up in like a minute. And then you can just roll with it. Um, I guess you can sort of compare it to chess. We we like to compare it to the Duke, but we haven't played the Duke on the channel, so... That'd be weird, then. <laughs> yeah. So, the uh, rules are relatively simple. We have our board here. It is a 5x5 five five grid. We each get five pieces. I will be the red, Chris will be the blue, and... Uh, or if you're colorblind, the gray and the blue. <laughs> I, I guess if there's any colorblind people, they, they may want pretty, to know that. They look like gray brown to me. <laughs> if that even is a color. <laughs> uh, you are a disadvantage. <laughs> so, um, on each side, you have your your cards that determine the moves you're allowed to do. Uh, first off, the objective of the game. There are two ways to win. Uh, the first way to win is either to kill your opponent's master, um, which is the obviously uh, mastery looking master martial arts fighter, um, or, or uh, the game is to get your opponent, or get your piece, your your, uh, your master pawn, your master pawn specifically into the opponent's temple. The opponent being, or the uh, temple being, these uh, little um, spaces temple, in between temple spaces. The temple spaces. They look like, <laughs> I, you know, look like temples. All right. So you have to get your uh, master pawn there, or you have to defeat the other master pawn. Um, all the other pieces are there just as combatants and um, are just regular pawns. And you basically move just based on the cards that you have. Um, and the movement is based on the direction the card is facing you. So while horse is in my hand, I can move to the left. While horse is in Nathan's hand, he'll be able to move to his left. So to me, the right. Yep. And what happens is I choose to, when it's my turn, I play a card. So I'm going to play horse. And after I play a card, then I change what cards I have in my hand. So that one goes in the center, I take what's in the center. Now when he goes, he's gonna play something like Goose and then he can take Horse. Yep. Um, it's actually a really awesome flow that the game has that I don't think I've seen any other game do. It kind of takes RNG. So what happens is we have a whole deck that we randomly shuffle and we draw these five cards. So the game has RNG, um, but after you, that initial draw, the RNG is, is done. Like, it doesn't really change. Yep. At that point, the only amount of RNG is uh, simply not being able to determine what your opponent's going to play. Mm -hmm. um, and that's between two different cards, a series of moves in between them. And that's about it. Uh, as far as pieces go, um, you cannot recover any pieces taken, so the game is has a, sh a short, li uh, like short play span, probably about 10, 15 minutes. It could go on for a while if you take your time with it. Um, it or it could last about uh, four turns, I think, is the earliest I've seen a game win by, but I'm sure it could be faster. Um, so you, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to say about how to play Onitama. Um, it's a game about strategy. It is designed as, as if playing a, like fighting in a martial arts fight um, in that the game is smooth and has a good flow to it. Uh, and it does exactly that. There will be obviously maneuvering defensive and offensive uh, plays that come in. So it's a good introduction to strategy, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think the best story we've seen yet is at Gen Con, Jen fought Rachel oh. and just decimated her right after Jen was like, I'm not good at strategy games. I don't know, guys. And just <laughs> killed all five of Rachel's pawns and yeah. had a merry time. And during that time, I was looking at the game going, this looks ex completely different from the game that I just played. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the moment where I was like, all right, I'm, I'm sold. This is great. Mm -hmm. um, so we can jump right in. Uh, right at the beginning, we have dr drawn our two cards and then the third or the fifth card placed there. Now, in the bottom, sim uh, bottom little symbol there would either be red or blue. Um, so since it is red, it's letting know that red player will go first. And that's how initiative is determined. It's a pretty intuitive way to do it. Yep. 
Um, still pretty new at the game, too early to tell if first play advantage is really that much of a thing yet or not. I don't feel it is yet, but then again, Literally, I don't the know. only time I think it's really made a difference is when you have a, a card that lets you jump forward two spaces. Ah, uh, yes. Um, because this three space barrier is generally enough to not really give you a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as you have that, it does change things a little bit. Absolutely. I don't know how dramatic it is. We played a, a test round before this and you killed me in about four rounds, which was probably the most embarrassing match I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so jump in. Ready? So you're going to take the first move? Yes. What are you going to do? Crabby? I'm uh, or goosey. Get, I'm uh, I'm goosey, gonna goosey. get I'm gonna get all goosey on you. Oh, all right, dude. so I'm gonna move here. Uh, another important thing to note is that you can easily skip over any piece. Uh, it's not about where you can like how you move. It's about where you can move. Right. Yeah. You're not following a path. So, it, this is just. For instance, I'm moving goose right now, which uh, would look like this, right? So I could have moved um, here or here with this piece, and I'm going to go straight ahead and move there. So anything colored is where you can move. Now, obviously, you can't stop in the same space as one of your own guys. Obviously. Um, but to capture one of the enemies, you have to land on their space. Mm -hmm. So if you skip over them, you don't just get them. Yep. Um, your turn. Now, as, as we're playing this, you may notice that there are some cards that are red, some that are blue, and some that are green. Now, that's purely aesthetic. Um, basically, what it means is that, or at least from my what I've gathered so far, is that the blue cards tend to move to the left more. Um, so horse can move to the left, and there mm. is an opposite card to the horse that actually is a reflect image, and it is red, so you move to the right. Uh, goose here moves also forward to the left mm -hmm. while moving backward to the right the reverse image is red anything that is green is a central central movement card that doesn't really favor one direction or the other yeah actually i think that's pretty fair mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's go ahead move diagonal up like this using cobra no now you have the horse i have the horse the horse is mine you have the monkey and I have the crab. Monkey and crab, very strong pieces. Crab is more of a like an escape piece, while monkey is definitely more of an offensive card, in my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to get ballsy here and actually move here. Oh, man. Getting in my face. Bag off, son. So, cool thing about this right now is like he's threatening my piece right now with Cobra, and uh, he's threatening my piece with Goose, so he actually put me in a lock here. Um, I can't take any of these pieces since I actually or take that piece back since I don't have a diagonal movement here But it's also important to note which card you're going to get next So I know that whatever move I make I'm gonna have monkey next um, And that also means that whatever move I'm gonna make is the card that he's going to get after his next turn And that's something that you want to keep in mind as you're as you're playing the game um, But put me in a clench here a little bit better of a clench than I thought I'd get you this early. That's you know it, it. I think that really speaks to though how cool this game works with its diagonal movement. Absolutely. Um. So I'm gonna make you feel the part of the fool here, and I'm gonna go something like this, using the horse to move over. Oh my goodness. I have the center cards. But the monkey was mine. So one thing I've noticed from playing this is it's a the center of the board is very important. I wouldn't say it's nearly as important as it is in a game like like a mouse guard or duke, but center of the board is very, very important for this because the closer you are to the edge of the board, the less moves you're actually going to be able to make with your pieces because a lot of uh, cards in this do have a lot of diagonal movements. In fact, I have played a game where there was actually no forward momentum pieces except for diagonal movements. Um, and so because of that, the game, it like it was very, very, very tricky because there was no head-on attacks. So he has, he's gone through with it, which uh, now means I'm going to act on my crab here, move two spaces over, take his piece right back. Only makes sense. But in return, he has the crab now. <laughs> yeah, the way I calculated it is that no matter what, I'm going to lose a guy, so might as well make sure that we both lose a guy. Absolutely. Um, the rule of trading, um, if, if anybody is familiar with it, is crucial in this game since you only have five pieces. 
Um, if you're familiar with, with checkers or chess, they say never trade if you're behind. So if you have three pieces and your opponent has four, trading, it brings you down to two and three, which is a, a huge, huge disadvantage because ratio-wise, you have less possible moves to make, right? It's... Um, if I have one piece left and you have two pieces, you have twice as many moves as you can make than me. If you have three pieces and I have two, then you have, you know, you have 50% more moves than you can make. And so the more and more pieces there are to move, the less of a deal it is of having a one up on your opponent. Mm -hmm. But with only five pieces like so, uh, that that's a huge, huge disadvantage to have is to be behind. So you never want to trade when you're behind. Only want to trade if you're you're equal winning. Equal or ahead, yeah. Equal or ahead. <clears throat> a lot of games. Now we traded pretty early, but a lot of games I've I've seen of Onitama, they tend to um, they tend to to come to conflicts. Like all the pieces have moved as much as they can until nobody wants to move anymore, <laughs> and then you're forced <laughs> to make a decision. Um, yeah, that kind of happened to me. Uh, anyone that's watched the Arcane Duels channel, uh, I had a match with Koshade uh, with, in Onitama, and we kind of got to that point where we had our Master Pawn in one Pawn Pawn left, <laughs> and we were just kind of dancing around each other until I tricked him, and then I beat him. <laughs> <laughs> so, right now I'm looking at a gun like I don't really feel like giving him monkey. Don't give me monkey. Don't I will only get more powerful. So I think instead I'm gonna take it, uh, get rid, of, uh, like put this guy out here so he's not just sitting in the back line. Move him with goose. Yeah, I'm gonna give you horse, or uh, I'll give you goose. I don't want goose anymore. Goose is so good. You've made a great mistake. That's not true. I don't like goose that much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird one. It is a very weird one. Hmm. I don't really want to give up crab. I don't feel like I have to though. Yeah, I mean, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to. Don't gotta do nothing. Yeah. Well, with the knowledge that I'm getting goose next turn, I feel like I gotta take advantage of the left attack movement. So it's important to note, too, that we have two left piece cards on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, like, playable. So there's going to be a lot more powerful left movement than there is right movement in mm. general. Mm -hmm. What you gonna do? It's what tricky. You do when I come for you. Only time, only time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna create a line here. I'm gonna give up monkey. Ooh, the monkey for the crib. Ooh, you are creating a solid defense line. Mm-hmm. It's always like one of my favorite strategies is just to have that wall because the interesting thing about it is every piece can act to defend another piece in the way that the person next to them can defend them. In other words, um, all of my pieces can move like crap or all of my pieces can move like horse. Uh, and so because of that, I know that all of them can move forward to take a piece from him, which means if he tries to threaten any one piece, his my their friend next to them could actually protect him. Until now. Until now. So he's threatening me there. He does have a left movement. So now I'm looking at a gun like, okay, he's gonna, he can move, take this piece with monkey. Obviously I can get him back for that. Um, and I would have to. Because otherwise you lose the, the state of equality. Mm -hmm. Though that's, I mean, that's still kind of vague because I think arguably you could still say that you have the advantage right now because you have a de better defensive position. Um, but I don't know. But I, you're closer. I, I'm also controlling the board a little bit more than you are. Yeah, you have this guy back here not doing much, but mm -hmm. these, this guy in particular obviously in a stronger position. Um, I'm actually going to move forward and threaten that piece. Oh, dang. Except you can't threaten that piece. Oh, I'm threatening that piece. Which piece? All of the pieces. Every <laughs> single one. Oh, I see. You're threatening him with crab. <laughs> I thought you were like, Cobra's threatening him. Like, you're, you're moving the wrong diagonal, buddy. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Should, should we be able to go high before it's too late? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. In addition, I've also got up on his master pawn. So his master pawn can no longer, at least right now, move forward. 
which he can't do anyway, so I guess that's a moot point, really. But. Yeah, I, this game is an interesting relationship where you don't generally try to shoot for the shrine until you're just down a lot of pieces. Yeah. Um, which... It's more of an incentive, really. Mm -hmm. It's 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 more a matter of like yeah I can I'm gonna try to push everything around until I can get to the shrine that's the hope but eventually you can end up getting yourself stunned and, and locked down. Yeah, I I really like the shrine mechanic though because I think it's the one thing in this game that prevents the game from becoming a stalemate. Um, if like Ooh. move move, so say you're down to like one master pawn each then it just becomes a race. Like It's still a little bit of a stalemate, but it just becomes a race of who gets to the shrine first at that point. Yeah, I think at that point, there's a potential fear of a stalemate um, if it's down to just two master pawns. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really sure. I've never been in that scenario before, but I do... I don't know. I, I do wonder if it should be just like whichever... Whoever's closer to the shrine is pretty much going to win because at that point, you can get up on your opponent's shrine and they have no choice but to sit there and protect it. Mm -hmm. uh, and which you can just sit around circling until finally they're yeah. out of possible moves to it protect it. turns into a dancing game and trying to trick your opponent. You guts that monkey and that crab. Yeah, strangely now I have a decent defensive position, whereas I kind of scattered you a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you're definitely more on the offensive, which means you sort of control who dies first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Strategy games have such an interesting relationship. Or dynamic, I guess. Ooh, super offensive. I'm offended. Well, look at that. I mean, like, I got this. That's the other thing about the Master Pawn. It's really risky, right? If he dies, it's over. But, you know, um, it is a piece. It's true. It's a piece you could just not be using. And because of that, eh, if you feel like going offensive, use your pieces. Put them in a position. It's all about positioning. It's all about um, mobility and, and kind of reminds me of like just like a lot of like wars back in the day. It was like, oh, who wins this war? Whoever has their soldiers at the other person's gate first. Truth. Railroads, man. Changed everything. <laughs> Speaking of railroads, what are you going to do? Chicka, 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 chicka. Oh, man. Okay. I mean, there's a couple of options that I have. You should move forward with your uh, master pawn. That's one thing that I'm considering. Yeah, you should do it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? You should, you should do it. Maybe so there is no, like, checkmate in this game. There is no check. There's so There's only a courtesy if you feel like... Yeah, you'd be like, oh, well, you're totally going to lose if you move there. Just let you know. You could, or you could not, and then they just die. You're like, oh, well, I guess <laughs> that was foolish of me. Yeah, I could stay defensive and move my master pawn up not the worst option. I could also put you in check, and really the only way to get out of it would be to move, which isn't really that hard for you to do right now. Yeah, I'm just going to go defensive. You just wanted the monkey. Yes. Yes, I do. It's okay. Trading that out for the, the monkey, or the cobra, right now isn't the worst thing. In fact, the crab actually gives me a little bit more strategic advantage than the monkey did. Especially in a especially in a defensive position. Mm -hmm. Crab is, besides dragon, probably like the best defensive piece that I've, or card that I've seen so far. Dragon's really cool. Dragon is weird. Some of the pieces are, are the cards are just strange. Mm -hmm. and like in a really good way. Rabbit is weird. Rabbit, yeah. Rabbit's probably the, the frog weirdest. Frog is the opposite of rabbit. Oh, is it? Yeah. I think. Hope. A lot of weird diagonal movement, which I guess makes sense for the animal that it's inspired by. Alright. Oh no. He did it. He really did it. I threaten you. My goodness. And that's actually kind of cool. I'm threatening his master pawn now. I didn't even move a piece into position to threaten him. I just simply took a different card. Mm -hmm. Man, if it was only any other piece other than the master pawn right there. I'd be like, Psh, I ain't afraid to lose him. <laughs> You're the one that decided to move him forward. That's true. I did. Well, I guess there's really only one move I can safely make right now. Mm-hmm. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> Get back. Get back, I say. Yes, sir. Why you do this? It's okay. With crab and goose, I will rule the water. 
and she being left and right. I guess the horse and monkey would have nothing to say about that. Like, yeah, I guess you can have it. I got. It. <laughs> I can go everywhere except for the right. <laughs> All right. Uh. Are you sure about that, bro? Mmm. Yes. I'm just shit talking. <laughs> like, eh, make me make a second <laughs> guess. You move. Is that what you want to do? It's probably what you want to do. But also probably not. Or is it? I threaten your peace. Damn it, Goose. You're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> totally can't take advantage of that card right now. <laughs> <sighs> this is in typical fashion, generally, of how me and Chris play. He actually had the offensive upper hand in, in the beginning, but... Uh, after making some trades, in typical fashion, it goes from me turning extremely aggressive and him trying to surround me with defense. Keeping on to that crab, huh? It's like you don't want to lose. I have so many arms between monkey and crab. I like crab. It's the only thing making my left, my right pawn useful. <laughs> I guess ex aside from holding back your your guy to your left. It is. But that guy's also not very useful right now. <laughs> he's, I mean, because he's of crap, like, he is able hey. to have some some center defense, so to say. This this space is, is dangerous. Mm -hmm. So dangerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I can't take his piece now because he has monkey. Yes, Get son. No tradesies. No tradesies this time. I mean, you can trade if you want to. I'll take your master plan. <laughs> it's cool with me, man. It's whatever. No big deal. It's cool. It's cool. I'll treat him well. I'll treat him right. I'll treat a boy right. <laughs> right? <laughs> Wait, what are we talking about? That's a weird interaction. I love I that. feel like this is super risky. I'm not even looking ahead at this point. I just kind of want to see what happens. No, I, I totally know what you mean. This game does that a lot. Because... <laughs> I mean, it's so hard to predict what what you're gonna get in the future. That like, I mean, I guess you can at least predict like what I might take if I choose either of these as my course of action. Mm -hmm. But beyond that point, it's a little hard to predict because of you know anticipating your opponent. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much the strength of the game. Now I actually have to move back here. It's kind of sad. Isn't it? It's always unsatisfying when you're like, demoralizing. well, it's demoralizing. I guess this is how life is gone. Man. Just give me that horse. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Forward momentum. That horse. We stay strong. The pyramid of strength. The pyramid of strength in this horse. What? Huh? What? Yeah. What are you going to do? You should move that guy over there. He's in one. Into the middle? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you make it sound like it's such a bad idea, but at the same time, it is it not? I mean, you can't do anything about it. <laughs> but you will get crab, so that does mean that after you take your next action, suddenly you could kill you from the right. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to make this weird, I guess. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, weird. I don't like this at all. I guess this is how you felt about your last move. Pretty much. <laughs> Except for at least you're putting a piece in the center instead of moving back. That's true. Yeah, claiming the center is definitely a good thing in this game. I guess it's a good thing in most games, really. Especially Mouse Guard, Swords, and Strongholds. Play that again on the show. People like that. It was really fun. Alright. Do something weird. Oh dang! You did something weird. Did it. You did it. You guys, did it so guys, good. I did it. So hard. I, I did it. I did it. Down, down, down. So good. It's so funny, because I'm right next to you. You can't do anything about him. He's right there. You guys just like, I don't know how to attack right. He, can't, I don't know he how to also attack can't right. do anything either, though. Yeah, he's, he's like, like, I can jump over you. Look at this trick. <laughs> you, I dare you. Move to your left. Do it. 
So there's something like so interesting. 18 or 20 something different cards in the game. And it's it's pretty crazy because you only draw five cards and you're only ever gonna use them for the rest of the whole match. And so because of that, it completely, like it can feel very different because you have all these like different combinations of attacks. Mm -hmm. You're also so, in check. Yeah, I saw, good friend. I saw that. I guess they, you can evade that pretty easily. <laughs> Uh, kind of. Because now I have to move back and then you're going to take that piece. So I'm pretty much potentially going to lose this. Oh my god. I like that we're w drinking whiskey on the show right now. The last time we did that was during um, Rogue Wizards. We were like, we're drinking this whiskey because we're classy and this is delicious. And people were like, why are they advertising whiskey? They advertising whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? No, I just... It's just fun. Why do you gotta be such a killjoy? Right? And they were like, who would sponsor that? <laughs> wow, douchebags. Alright. Move there. And just put me in danger check. Danger check! Bad right. boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? Uh, I'm going for you. Danger, danger. Alright. Take your cobra. If you're wondering, by the way, we're drinking Four Roses single barrel. Mmm, yeah. Delicious. It's my favorite. We're not a sponsor. <laughs> we're not. We're not. <laughs> we're not. We're not sponsors. We're not sponsored. I think it's the right way to say it. Whatever. <laughs> I have an unconventional move in mind. That's pretty much all I made half of this game. It's totally fair. I almost wish I was threatening you with my master pawn right now. <laughs> You're like, look how close I am to your shrine. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do it. Fuck it. What do I got to lose? What do Everything? you got to lose? Probably. You are in check again, though. I know I'm talking away from the microphone. Deal with it. Crab is not gonna help you at all. <laughs> No, it's... I mean, oh, well, it's, I guess it could. It could, but it's like it'll just equal out. But it's at the same time. There's another move. That would almost win me the game right now. You think so? Yeah. Let's see. Move there, take it. Or move there, don't take it. Threaten you, and then you can move right there. And then there's nothing I can do about it. And then you also have Goose, of course. I guess I really have to make this move then. Yeah, no matter what, you're still threatened. Oh, uh, yeah, so. Okay. I guess I finally should take this game. Yeah. And this is where we're at. <laughs> to be fair, once again... Crab took me by surprise. I guess I really should have seen that. It's always crab. I was, I was so focused on the Master Pawn. That's my usual issue with strategy games. I get too focused. The important, the, like, the one main important piece, you're like, oh yeah. That I guy. totally get him, I totally get him. No, I don't totally get him. <laughs> yeah, I guess really that boils down to a bad move on my part. I could have done that better. Yeah, but there was still like a trade ultimately. Yeah, but I could have done that trade off earlier. It would have been the same. Truth. Although I guess I did push you back, so if you ever try to go for my shrine, you still have the advantage, but you know, better than you would have had otherwise. I like that you have my guys all nicely organized. <laughs> you just and I'm just like, down. fuck these guys, they're all dead. It's because us red Onitama figures, we take care of our prisoners. Because we know that one yeah. day they may be strong allies. Here, I'll move them over here. You fucking, you get to stay laying down. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, I win. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll do that. No, don't do that. You don't know what you want, guy. You don't know what you're doing to me, guy. If I give up the crab, it's gonna fucking. I'm gonna get tricked again. <laughs> That's why I don't want to give it up. <laughs> it's not that I'm good with it or like it. It's <laughs> that I don't want to give it to you. 
That's how I feel about Tiger. I'll hold on to Tiger the whole game. <laughs> That's actually what happened last time. I didn't use Tiger the entire game until I technically won with it. That's how it goes, man. Tiger. Tiger's so strong. I guess I could use Cobra and just hold on to Crab. And then I won't risk losing a piece. And I'll threaten you. Then you'll just move off to my side, and then I won't be able to do anything about it because I'll be right side weak. Cause you, yep, because horse... Super strong left. Not yeah. so much right. I don't want to do that. I'll just fucking use crab. You're in check, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> oh, wait. Do I just win now? Do you? Hmm. No, wait. Oh, because you gave up crab. Shit. Shit. I forgot the alternative way of winning. <laughs> oh, no. Just go there, guy. You can hold the fort. You got this. Ugh, fuck. What do I do now? What do I do? I think I'll use monkey. And I'm in your temple. Nothing Man. you can do about it. No, I thought the one time I was going to beat you was going to be on the show. And then it wasn't. No, I can't get humiliated there. Justin's done enough on that on the other show. <laughs> so, um, he's sitting there alone by himself on a park bench, sad, while I rampage through his temple and he can't do anything about it. <laughs> I can only move like this! <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trained for this moment! <laughs> I forgot how to do the other things! Uh, it's a fitting end in this game. At least we killed the majority of our people. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be weird otherwise. So that, that one, one thing that was interesting about that is that um, because I was just, because the Master Palm was just in the proximity, that was enough to end the game. Because since he, I moved there and was able to take the temple, he couldn't kill me that turn immediately ended it because he can't move a piece onto the temple because mm -hmm. I can take the piece. Yeah, exactly. So at that point, the only way to stop him would have been to kill his Master Palm. You should have moved your master on the temple, so I could've got a double win. I couldn't, actually. Well, I wanted a double win. Yeah, well, you lose some, you double win some. In this case, you just won one. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, Onitama. It was Onitama. Um, Pull out some of these other crazy awesome cards just to show them off on the other camera. Yeah, definitely vote on uh, what you want us to play next. I don't know if we're gonna change up the voting for this one specifically, but if you guys want us to play more tabletop or board games on the show, or even card games, uh, let us know because we already have a ton. And we play them all the time. We, we just we, don't we do play them, them all for the time. show. Yeah, so we, Elephant, he's one of my favorites. We stopped doing them for a while just because we didn't have the right equipment for it, but now that we have a better camera, it's a little bit easier. Um, so let us know what board games you want us to play in the show because we're we go to Gen Con every year if you didn't bump into us there, so we're suckers for these things. Um, but I think the uh, the question of the day is, what card would you design for this game? Super simple. Yes, absolutely. And, and I mean, maybe you can get a grasp off of the quick flashes of cards that Nathan just threw down on the table. But, I mean, it, even this aside, maybe you've played this game, maybe not. What, what would be the card that you would want to introduce to this game that would kind of switch things up? Even feel free to, like, draw it out or whatever. Yeah, ooh, that'd be fun. Right? All right, everybody. Comments. Well, thank you for watching, and uh, till next time. Bye, everyone. <laughs>